guys, guys, uh, here we are. We're back. Comedy Pinata. Very excited about today's panel. Um, let me just jump into this. Thank you guys for coming. First time we're here, and and our producer slash first time. But I want to get these intros right. So to my left, the incredibly talented Renee Blair. Debut debut album Seventeen came out early November, uh, the fifth, I believe it was when it came out. Yep. So remember that annually, every November fifth, you go, oh my god, this one Seventeen came out. So years from now, and on the seventeenth anniversary, <laughs> seventeen years from now, we're gonna celebrate Seventeen right here at Zany's uh, at, at one p.m. Um, 25 million streams. She's open for everyone from Kane Brown to Willie Nelson. Pretty sweet. One of CMT's next women of country. That's country music television's uh, next women of country. And radio host at Yoko Nashville. Not to be confused with Yoko Ono, but Yoko Y O C O. And that that is recorded at Top Golf. Is that correct? It is. We're still killing the game, though. Unbelievable. And do you golf? Not for my life. No. Okay. Well, I got to tell you, congratulations on the new album. How are you feeling about it? Uh, really good. It's been a long time in the making, but um, seems to be doing really well and just love making music. And and uh, how long did it take to prepare this album? Literally like 17 years. <laughs> 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 no, I moved to Nashville when I was 17 and was that naive girl that thought I would have a Grammy by the time I was 20. Right. And here I am at 21. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it's been like over a decade. I, you know, was young and dumb in my 20s, drank way too much, kissed all the wrong boys and wrote a lot of songs about it. And now the album is out and it's wonderful and I'm very proud of it. Well, speaking of kissing all the wrong boys, uh, to my left here, <laughs> Adrian Culp, uh, our producer. And let me go through. This is this is quite the resume. Most comics, it's like, hey, w what should your intro be? Adrian gave me. OK, here we go. Guys, he spent not 17 years. 15 years in Hollywood, comedy development for Adam Sandler and Chelsea Handler, comic booker for CBS's Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. That's how we initially met. Uh, that and some uh, beverages, as they say, at the Hollywood Improv. Um, created at dad underscore or underscore alive, which opened, uh, which opened door for best-selling author with, he's got six books. Six, six books. I've got two of them. Yeah, I got two Love of them, it. and uh, now he's a country music. He's in country music radio and a streaming producer, and he may or may not work for a tech company named After Fruit. Anyways, uh, Adrian, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Double, appreciate it. Double duty today. And this is going to be interesting because normally we have stand-up comics or performers like yourself, but today we have an actual comedy booker. Yeah, like you've literally booked late night talk show sets you've booked roundtables panel for chelsea and you work for sandler and you you've got like a really good palette of understanding how stand-up works 100 percent. i think um so late late show i probably in my time there put f maybe 50 comics right uh on that show, and, and how many I, are you I would proud say of? probably <laughs> <laughs> all of them, all of them. Steve. Yeah, of course. No, I would say probably thirty-five of those were first time on national television. So wow, it creates this bond between uh, you know producer, executive, and artist, uh, comedian that uh, you just can't ever replace. Executives are in, are always invested, like bookers especially, because you you broke somebody, and then all the success that they've earned since you always feel like is attributed to you, and you can go fuck yourself. It's all in the artist. Hundred percent. Shit, you weren't there writing the jokes. I love you, great hair. Look, I think Adrian I, Culp. I think I had Gaffigan on three times. Do you think Gaffigan would be where he is today exactly, if it weren't for yeah. the work that I did with him there? Um, and Renee, I got to ask you: um, Have you seen much stand-up in your life? Have you come to Zanies, uh, seeing that you moved here? What at twenty-one? In no, I moved, moved here at seventeen. Seventeen. That's correct. That, yeah. Part of the name of the album. Um, Yes, I've come to Zamie's many times. I also shamelessly slide in the DMs of the people that are coming because I want to meet them and Very nice. hang out with them. Um, never got a message from her. <laughs> never got one. Sorry about that. One Wait, day. It's never too late, right? That's right. Yeah, okay. There we go. Um, no, I love comedy. I actually joke that when I'm out on the road touring, my favorite part of my show is the 30 seconds I get to try to make jokes in between my songs. Yep. So comedy is certainly um, you know, a huge part of what keeps me going. I think you got to be able to laugh through the tough moments in life. And so, yeah, happy to be here. And quick question before we dive in on clip one, number one, because you are a fantastic artist, uh, singer, songwriter, I am very curious, before you hit the stage, do you have a pre-game ritual that you put yourself through? Not necessarily a game, but my brother and I usually will smoke a little cannabis stick. Okay. And yep. um, 
But, you know, it's... That makes sense because when I walked in here today, <laughs> you said, you want a little blow before we go on air? I was like, what are you talking... I just I just met you. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, we like to have fun. You know, yep. being out on the road is a big party. I want my live show to be that as well. People are working hard out there and deserve to have a good time and relax and they want to rage. So I'm going to give them the party that they Absolutely. came Hell for. Yeah. By the way, can't cannabis stick? I don't it's the PG way sure to say a joint. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I see. Right. Yes. There you go. Because yeah. you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of eight year olds that watch this, Adrian. Come on, <laughs> you know this. All right, clip number one. Again, we go through these clips. I don't know who these are. Uh, you know, they're they're pre sought out by our wonderful producer David Chastine over there, a fellow comic as well. Here we go. First one, out of New York City, Mr. Mark Norman. Mark I don't know. Does Norman. that name any ring any bells to you? I'm a face person. I probably will know the face immediately. Can't he's very Jewy. Okay. Uh, very, very Jewish. Uh, no, he's he's a great comic. He's great recently with finances. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's very good with his finances. That was that was anti-Semitic. That's too far. Oh, sorry you know, about that. We, 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 this is not my, that kind of my show. My fiance is part Jewish, and he takes very much pride in his finances. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on being engaged. Uh, Mark Norman, any thoughts out of the gates on Mark? See, this is a weird thing. 15 years in Hollywood, specifically comedy, you would think that a, a name like Mark Norman would ring a bell to sure. me. But I sort of cycled out after 15 years. So there are yeah. comics that I know extremely well, but then someone like Mark, I may have a facial recognition, but I don't know him by name. So this could be interesting. Gotcha. Great New York comic has recently blown up on social media, put out just one of those things where, and I'm sure in your industry, there may be some similarities because there are the industry darlings and then there's people that don't get anointed by the industry and they got to walk around the side and kind of make a name for themselves. He recently put out. What would you call the side darlings? Uh, Man, the side darlings? That's me. Whatever The true artists. Yes. But there you yeah. go. <laughs> Not groupies. Not groupies. <laughs> but but he, uh, he released his own hour special on YouTube and racked up a ton of views, millions of views. So not 25 million. But he's got a bunch. He's great. He's an incredible joke writer. So let's watch a little Mark Norman here. I just got back from Europe. They really make fun of us over there. That's like all they do. Oh, you Americans, you're so fat. Uh, I'm like, yeah, yeah, we're doing great. <laughs> Why is that a bad thing, how fat we are? I think it's cool. It's like impressive. More people die in America of obesity than starvation, which is like, hey, we did it. <laughs> how cool are we? We're dying from eating food. We go up to heaven, some guys like, I starved to death. What happened to you? We're like, snacks. <laughs> Yeah, the McRib is back. What do you want? He's like, well, how'd you lose your foot? Frostbite? Nah, frosting. Yeah, yeah we're fat. We're so high up on the food chain. One of my friends, he only eats grass-fed beef. You realize how crazy that is? That means he gets to pick what he eats, eats. That's pretty good. And here's the weird thing. Cows eat grass. That's what we mess with our food. When something eats what it's supposed to, we brag about it. That's like saying, hey, you know, my four-year-old is sober. Get the hell out of here. Father of the year over here. Yeah, we're fat. All my friends are fat, mostly. My family's fat. I grew up pretty fat, you know. I, I try not to make fun of fat people unless they make fun of me. That's when I let it go, you know. Like, all my fat friends give me shit. One of my fat friends told me I have skinny privilege. Like, privilege? Something can't be a privilege if you could do it, too. <laughs> Right? I've known you my whole life. You used to be thin. That's not how privileges can't be attained by exercising, right? If that were the case, then black people would take a jazzercise class. They wouldn't get pulled over, right? <laughs> It'd be that simple. He always condescends to me. Oh, you're so lucky you're thin. Lucky? You gotta work at it. It's hard. What the hell? You gotta eat right? It sucks. Saying you're so lucky you're thin is like saying you're so lucky you don't have kids. No, no, I had food, and I pulled out. <laughs> He's like, whatever, it's easy being skinny. Well, not really. You couldn't do it. There he is, Mark Norman. Comedy. Love it. Comedy. Uh, initial thoughts. I'll, I'll go with... Uh, okay, so Adrian, you got something on, bubbling so on mind? So I, yeah? I think it's interesting. So there was one moment there where he does the... E so one of, my, one of the favorite things that I used to love right. and try and encourage comics to do was to use the pregnant pause. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a line there where he did he did the eats eats right, where, and there's sort of like that pregnant pause in between. Sure, yeah, which which I really appreciate. 
I'm not sure if I invented that or if it preceded me, but I'm going <laughs> to claim ownership over it today. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd like to talk about it later. The, <laughs> the other thing is, look, you can't lose with self-deprecating humor. Yeah. And he not only took it upon himself to use self-deprecating humor a, as the individual, yeah. he took all of United States citizens and sure. rolled it into one, which I think uh, was a good move. It includes everyone in the audience, allows them yeah. to feel like they're part of the joke. Um, but yeah, interesting guy. Interesting How about you? Any, any thoughts, Miss Blair? One of my favorite things that comedians do, if they do it well, is they talk about everyday issues that people are thinking, but no one wants to necessarily say or address. Sure. And I love that, you know, we all walk around and sometimes see people that are overweight or skinny mm -hmm. and it's a little taboo or, you know, politically incorrect to yep. bring it up. And I love the way that he addresses an issue that is true and also bringing in the Europe aspect of it, of how they make fun of us for being fat. Like it is very true. Mary, a lot more Americans die from obesity than starvation. So to be yep. able to make us laugh about such a tragic situation. Uh, I'm always down for that style of humor. Yeah, he, he did a great job, and I think he did a great job setting it up, and, and you remarked on it, about how he's galvanizing everybody instantly by the Europeans make fun of us. So now we're all on the same side. And then he's going to, a, again, a taboo subject like being overweight or obese or whatever. And, you know, he's he... he 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 safely puts the banner up and then delves into it and even gets a good black joke in there with white privilege turning the black privilege with the uh, jazzercise line, which was great. And a good pullout <laughs> joke, which if you can make the a dirty joke <laughs> as well, he he checked right. several boxes. Look, the rhythm method is not dead. That's right. But I, I also what I like about look, he's somebody that's great to follow on Twitter. Because he's got a lot of one-liners mm -hmm. and he's really great with it. But what I like about him too is that he's very, very comfortable in his delivery. He's he's he doesn't have to sell you a joke like Sebastian Maniscalco. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. Right. I'm just saying that there's two different styles, and and Mark definitely has his own style, which is a little more laid back. There's a comfortability and security in his material. Sure. And uh, he's somebody I just. If I come on, if he comes on stage, it's like, let me crack open a beer. I, I, I'd like to sit here and listen to this guy for, for an hour. It'd yeah. be a lot of fun. So do you think he wrote that from personal experience? Do you think Mark has ever been obese? <laughs> do you think he's... Well, he mentioned he was he was overweight when he was a kid. Yeah. Um, and look at it. He's eating a donut at a pizza shop. <laughs> True. <laughs> so he's... Yeah, you got to gotta own it. That guy gonna... tendencies, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but blowing up lately, what do you give a score, one to ten? Uh, oh, this is a tough one. Um... I'm gonna go. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go eight on that. Eight on that. Yeah. Okay. What do you think, Renee? I'm gonna go eight on that. Eight on that. Yeah. I'll go. I'll go seven point five. I okay. didn't know if we could do points. You go. You go points. Okay. You do whatever you want. Oh, hold on. We're you gonna could back say, it up. We're going <laughs> fractions. You could say I give him three s'mores and a Big Mac. <laughs> it's like it, it, it's all arbitrary here. But uh, I would I give him seven point five. five on <laughs> it. Because I I liked it. I, I liked it. It was a, it was a great joke. But uh, I'm comparing it to the the rest of the things we've seen, and so if I give Chappelle a ten sure. or a nine, it's like I sure. can't give that a nine as well. I'm gonna go seven point five. But I, I, I love Mark Norman. I think, I think it's he's fair. Great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Any closing thoughts on Mark Norman? No, I don't think so. What about you, Renee? Uh, we saw one bit, so I think I'm definitely intrigued enough that I would like to see more. Good. Yeah, I'll I like be that. checking him. You checking left it out in a good stuff. spot. Here we go, clip number two. Any guesses? Oh, this is all any guesses? I'm just seeing if there's oh. a transference of energy. Ah, any guesses? <laughs> Maybe female? Oh, let's see, let's see. Is there female on this? Ooh! Was I right? Boy, is she right. Bang, look at that. Joan Rivers! Joan Rivers! Wow. Yes. Oh my God, the energy. Old school, that I was great. I think put it over my head. That was great. It just came together. <laughs> that was awesome. All right, so any initial thoughts on Miss Rivers, guys? I hope that I can be preserved like she was to a certain <laughs> extent in my life. When you said I'll, we'll be sitting here in 17 years celebrating my album, I was like, and I'm going to look the same. Just You're watch. Gonna, uh, yeah, <laughs> no, that's right. Kidding. Yeah, And you will. I'm sure you got great <laughs> genes. Any, any thoughts on Miss Rivers? I, too, would also love to be preserved <laughs> yeah. uh, as well uh, uh, as well as Mrs. Rivers. Um, yeah. I don't know. She's an icon, you know? Yeah. Um, she's one of those people that I feel like falls into like the, you know, the Dick Clark kind of um, category. Um, but as far as from a comedic standpoint, 
I don't know that I that I know a ton about you know, uh, about yeah. Jones Jones jokes. Well, I mean, yeah. you, you think about her. She, I think, was Johnny Carson's favorite guest host. Uh, I think she had the record for most guest hosting uh, when Carson bowed out on, on The Tonight Show and he went golfing or was nursing a hangover. She would come and fill in for him. And then she got her own late night talk show on Fox and Carson took it as an act of betrayal and never spoke to her again. Oh, which I didn't know that. Came out in the press, which was pretty shocking to see. She also, um, uh, she's... I think that as much as we revere Don Rickles, Joan Rivers is his equal. She is a wrecking ball, a, a bolt of energy, and constantly, I think, throughout the course of the last five to seven years, you've seen a lot of people saying, I wonder what Carlin would think these days. I wonder what Rickles would... I would love to see Joan Rivers. Yeah. Even though she's, she, she passed away somewhat recently, I would love to have seen her as will cancel political correctness is all still very relevant and present i'm sure I'd she would have been canceled it. if like <laughs> that's true yeah her, in her prime heyday was the cultural climate that we're in now mm -hmm. um i became obsessed with joan rivers during when she would you know the grammys oscars she was on the red carpet interviewing the stars oh, and she right, would yeah. give it to them yeah she was ruthless and then she hosted her own show on e the fashion police that's right and um you know i love fashion as well but yeah the way she would combine comedy and fashion and like kind of ripping on these celebrities for what they would wear. <laughs> it, it was so entertaining. So big Joan Rivers fan. My, yeah. my goodness. Did David send over the resume on Joan? No, I, I just, was about I'm to just fan. thank you because I used to at one point have my finger on the pulse of comedy and he just reminded me that she passed away. So now <laughs> I feel fully informed <laughs> and I can speak about her in past tense. Well, let's see a little Joan Rivers here. like this you know and I feel sorry for any single girl today the styles and the whole society is not for single girls we know that single men yes a man he's single he's so lucky a boy on a date all he has to be is clean and able to pick up the check he's a winner you know that <laughs> or a, a man a man could call up anybody in the whole world you know that hello I saw your name in the locker room I thought I'd give you a quick call <laughs> me. a girl a girl can't call girl you have to wait for the phone to ring right and when you, when you finally go on the date, the girl has to be well-dressed, the face has to look nice, the hair has to be in shape. The, the girl has to be the one that's bright and pretty, intelligent, a, a good sport. Howard Johnson's again, hooray, hooray. <laughs> Excuse me. A girl, a girl, you're 30 years old, you're not married, you're an old maid. A man, he's 90 years old, he's not married, he's a catch. It's a whole different thing. <laughs> <laughs> it kills me. We have an extra man. Bring him along. Bring him along. He's 98. Bring him. Bring him. He's dead. Bring him. <laughs> we'll prop him. Just bring him. We'll say he's quiet. <laughs> I know what I'm speaking about because my mother had two of us at home that weren't, as the expression goes, moving. And I <laughs> don't ask. And I, I'm from a little town called Larchmont where if you're not married, if you're a girl, and you're over 21, you're better off dead. It's that simple, you know? And I was the last girl in Larchmont. Do you know how that feels? Sitting around my mother's house, 21, 22, 24, having a good time, living, eating candy bars, enjoying myself, but single. And the neighbors would come over and they'd say to my mother, How's Joan? Still not married? <laughs> and my mother would say, if she were alive. You know how that hurts? When you're sitting right there? When I was 21, my mother said, only a doctor for you. When I was 22, she said, all right, a lawyer, CPA. 24, she said, well, grab a dentist. 26, she said, anything. If he could make it to the door, he was mine, you know? What do you mean you don't like him? He's intelligent, he found the bell himself. What do you want? Anybody that came to my house was it. Oh, Joan, there's the most attractive young man down here with a mask and a gun. Anything that showed up. <laughs> All right, Joan Rivers. Obviously, uh, it's got to be circa the 60s, I assume, on some probably variety show, That's right? That's the Ed Sullivan show. 67. Ed Sullivan show. Holy shit. 67. Wow, okay. Any thoughts, guys? Um, I'm shocked that it that was 1967, and here we are in 2021. 
and I think the stigma between men and women, it's changed somewhat, but I still related to some of those jokes. Yeah. And that was really interesting to think like how long ago that was. And, you know, you still hear, oh, if you're not married by 30, like what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. Um, And I just I loved her delivery. I thought she was so entertaining. It was comedic, but you could tell she didn't seem like she was intentionally trying to make you laugh. Like she's just telling stories about her life. And I, I loved how raw it felt. Yeah. How about you, Adrian? You know, I think it's interesting. Like we just said, 1967, you know, I have a lot of respect for comedians that first off work clean, um, you know, but back then it, it really had to be all about the joke uh, and the story behind the joke and and the way that you were able to. And I mean, this, I guess it's just a little different today. You know, as I was watching that clip, you know, it made me wonder, you know, you're listening to these sort of muffled laughter in the audience if we were to play a set, you know, from yourself or uh, from anyone right now in 1967, I would love to just see the look on their faces. (laughs) Oh my God. But I, but I think it's, it it is one of those things where just to, it's, it's great to be able to see someone be funny without having to be vulgar, uh, without having to use obscenities. Uh, I mean, that's a, that's a true, uh, that's a talent. I mean, that's, that's not easy to do. Yeah, well, you see this clip again, 1967, and you go back to that time where there literally were very few, if any, female stand-up comedians. And she's booked on there, and she's talking about things that, again, today could be relevant and maybe even to some degree kind of passe in the world of stand-up comedy, like, oh, we've heard this bit before. But that's probably the first time people have heard a bit like that ever. Uh, and it's coming from one of the best. And you also see that Joan is not just a stand-up comedian. It, 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 when you watch her delivery there, she's an entertainer. An entertainer. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. She's performing the bit. And it, it's almost like, I don't know, when I was watching her, it's so almost theatrical where yeah. it's like, wow, this could be like a one-woman show on Broadway when Absolutely. you see her delivery in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Were there any other, you know, in that era, were there any other female comics doing what she did? Well, you had Phyllis Diller, right, uh, right. I think, who was pretty Ruth Buzzy. Um, and, and a lot of these were staples on the variety shows. But Joan Rivers was not necessarily somebody you would see consistently pop up on variety shows, which yeah. I find interesting. I, th- I think she was more of a pure stand-up. You know, I wonder if, you know, 1967, I mean, you're still thinking about a time where there was like a, a housewife sort of mentality. Yeah. I wonder if... You mean if the good old days? The, the, Sorry. Steve. Sorry. <laughs> I love to- those jokes. I'm not your average <laughs> feminist. By the way, this... I, I can laugh at my this own is, This is funny for me because I'm usually behind the camera or off to the side. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't do that. Um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that, but anyway... You're the only guest that's actually turned it around and set like Swayze style. AC Slater. Put, yeah, that's right. Yeah, putting a mark on the show. Putting a mark on the AC show. AC yeah. Slater. Yeah, I might turn oh, mine around. But what I was about to say is, you know, <laughs> I wonder if, if in that era, if she was the voice of the quote unquote housewife, you know, sure. if if they were championing her with her material, you know, saying what, and as sort of vanilla as it was as we look at it today, if she was the voice of of the sort of at the time, modern I'm sure day housewife. To, to a degree, she had to have been. Yeah. And, uh, you, you know, you're looking at her as a single girl. But uh, in, in the bit, she's a single girl. But, my God, I, to have such an impact for Carson to bestow you the reins of the Tonight Show desk, uh, that is an immense privilege. And the fact that, she, again, she, you know, rule breaker, ground breaker, iconic, obviously, for, for all those events. What do you give this score? You know, it's a tough one because it's uh, so there's no icon score. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah. You know, uh, however, I feel like I have to put her up there with the upper echelon of. Uh, you almost want to see something present day, but we're. Yeah. So it's a different. Kinda, do we have a uh, do we have a grading scale for the 60s and 70s? <laughs> no, uh, I think no I'm going to go I'm going to go ahead and say uh, again, the best bit of all time. I'm going I'm to pull yeah. it back a little bit. I'm going to say nine. on that A one. nine. Yeah. Wow, okay. You know, for back then, and I'm sure her style of comedy, like you said, was the first of its time. Mm -hmm. So I assume that she was a trailblazer and Mm -hmm. very courageous. 
So I'm going to give her a 10. 10. For back then, beca- yeah. granted, if I would put it up to comedy today, it would be a different scale, but I want to give her a 10 out of 10 based on that clip from 1967. Right, so in 1967, she's getting a 9, she's getting a 10. Right. 2021, I'm sorry, yeah. Joan, it may have been about a 4 or 5. Um, yeah, because we're... That is like a joke. You've heard distillations right. of that joke so many times throughout the course of the last, you know, your your career in comedy, and I'm sure everything you've seen. Uh, so I'm gonna grade it on the scale like you did, Miss Blair, where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna put myself in 1967 and say this is pretty great. So I'm gonna give it an eight. Okay. I'm gonna give it an eight on Miss Joan Rivers. It was pretty awesome to see her light up the screen today. Uh, clip number three. Let's dive in here. Okay. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I'm not familiar with this name. This guy, he's a comedy seller regular. He's been on several late nights. Okay. He's a guy. He's very funny. I think you guys are going to like him. Tom Thacker. Kinda, how do I say it? Tom the car. The car. The car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom Charlie's Thakar. Thakar. Not, not to be Thakar. confused <laughs> with uh, the cologne that I used to wear to middle school dances. What was it? <laughs> Dracar. Dracar. <laughs> Dracar. <laughs> <laughs> Have you never heard of Dracar? No. Oh, Have you heard of Bugle Boy Pants? I like bugles a little. Uh, so no, uh, again, uh, did you know that Adrian used to go shopping at Chess King? Have you heard of Chess King? Oh, I have not. No, no? okay. It sounds lovely though. He lost his virginity to Belle Biv DeVoe. Have you heard of Belle Biv DeVoe? I thought you were going to say at Chess King. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, in a dressing room? In a dressing room. It, it, it all came full circle, yeah. We're just yeah. making up your life story as it unfolds. All right, so here. this is Sorry. Tom Thakar, a seller regular. I'll look for him because I'll be at the seller uh, next week. So let's all see right. a little Tom Thakar. Let's do it. He looks How does Tom like identify himself these days? Country, country, maybe I'll run. I got some pretty good ideas. Here's here's my first big idea. I think we should have a tax for hot people. You know, like if you're super hot, I think you should have to pay an extra tax. Because nobody would be mad about that. You know, like if you got a letter in the mail that was like you have to pay the hot people tax, you'd be like, oh hell yeah, all right, all right. I'll see you, government. Okay. I might bang the government, I don't know. <laughs> About time somebody saw what I've been doing out here. I'm busting my <laughs> <laughs> You could write off your ugly family or whatever, you know, like <laughs> be like a real ugly kid or something. You'd be like, Derek, you were so ugly this year, I'm taking you to Disneyland, you little bastard. <laughs> I think hot people tax, I also think, I'm gonna say it, big dick tax, that's right. Yeah, you got a big dick on you, you gotta pay up, brother. You've had it too good for too long. Got a big old crank on you? I see. You got a big hog? Yep. You gotta pay. <laughs> I'm not even a comedian. I just wander into basements screaming about this, you know? <laughs> Anybody got a big dick down here? You gotta pay! It's only fair! Fair is fair! <laughs> I do think it would be good. I don't, you know. I think some guys with big old cranks might like that one, you know? I think uh, some guys with big dicks might like a big dick tax because then they could, you know, because just having a big dick doesn't mean people see it, you know? <laughs> some guys have sneaky big dicks because they got, like, bad personalities and weird faces and shit, you know? So they have d- dicks that never get seen. What a tragedy. Big dick never seen. What a tragedy, you know? Because you can't just run around and be like, hey, I got a big one. I'll show it to you. There's a bridge over there. Yeah, come on now. That's not attractive. But now you wouldn't have to do that. Now you could be like, hey, taxes are pretty bad this year. <laughs> Let's just say your boy had to fill out a W-10 and a half. Is that, is that good? I had to go to H&R Cock. All right. <laughs> okay. God damn it. That, I, I will say that's the first time I've cried on this show. It, it, I, I was <laughs> crying. Um, what are your What are your thoughts, guys, on this? Uh. He brought it home there. Um, you know, I haven't heard it called a crank in a minute, so th- <laughs> yeah. I think that that really got me. Um, you know, I I beg to differ, maybe, and argue yeah. against the point that uh, you know not everyone can always notice a big dick. I don't know if my wife's trying to get me to to start wearing joggers. Which I don't even know what the fuck that was. Joggers. We're learning a little Evidently too much about you, Adrian. Swept, but there's sweatpants but that's okay, that yeah. tighten yeah. up around the ankle. Oh, I'm familiar this with This is Adrian's that. last appearance on the show. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I have to remind her that I'm 45. And I, she's like, I don't understand. What does that have to do? And I'm like, joggers. What if I come across 
an incredible situation that yeah. inspires me below situation. the waist. Yeah, uh, uh, a gust and of she's wind. like, does that happen often? I'm like, well, not really, but <laughs> it's nice having that layer of denim. <laughs> Yep. Uh, it, it's just a, you yeah. know, it's a layer of security. You can move over. It's okay. Anyway, you can move oh, away. Fine. It's fine. Wait, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> so what did you think about Tom the car? It was, it was great. <laughs> yeah. It was okay. great. Well, let's talk about your dick, Adrian. <laughs> 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 um, Not filling out any more forms. So I couldn't tell if you were like laughing because you felt uncomfortable that you were sitting next to a girl through all the dick talk at first a little no, bit. No, 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 no. Or no. if you genuinely were that moved by the comedy. I was genuinely, genuinely laughing. Yes. I swear um, to God. Yeah. Listen, my... I'll just go ahead and put this out there. My, here we go. Here we go, guys. I'm laying it all out on the line. Renee's last time on the show. My fiance <laughs> jokes that he's with a 12-year-old boy with tits because I love boy humor. Yeah. Like, so I personally... Fuck yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, I'm sorry. I can't... I am who I am. I, at least I know Let's that. Let's eat Arby's and, eat, and watch more Tom the Car. Sure. Yeah. Is, is, that why um, they call cars you, is that why they call you booby bones? Booby bones. Yeah. Like, I just... I really enjoy that kind of somewhat childish humor where it's yep. like they don't take it that seriously it's like a dick joke yeah and, exactly um, he just seemed to me like i could picture him telling this joke not only in the basement of whatever the comedy cellar, yeah. venue he's at but also like in the bedroom in a fraternity or like middle school at a sleepover with his boys yeah so i like that it felt like kind of a a joke that could you know just be anywhere and everywhere with a group of guys yeah i the reason i was Look, the joke itself is funny, but I think sometimes I remove myself from the joke itself and I'm watching it going, man, he's really going down like a dick rabbit hole. <laughs> and he just like, a oh, let me think about hole. this with the dicks. And then, oh, I, uh, with dicks and this. And he's talking about all different sizes of dicks and all kinds of It's just of such a male dicks. mindset to me. It's, it's like, like <laughs> I, I get it. I believe it. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing at the absurdity <laughs> of a guy like with pen and paper going, oh, let me think about this. Oh, you can write this about dicks, too. And he just went down this fucking shaft. It was so goddamn funny. Did you say down the shaft? Down the shaft. Down the dick uh -huh. shaft. Also, it was generally hilarious, too. And the fact that he, like, even when you remove, you're telling the joke, but then you remove yourself and you put yourself in the comedy club with everybody and just like, oh, I just walk into basements like, hey, let me see this. <laughs> Dicks and stuff. <laughs> just like it was a compliment to the joke and acknowledging how fucking ridiculous the joke is, which I love too. I also like that he made himself laugh. Like oh god, he was yeah. actually laughing at himself like a he, lot. Yeah, he was invested, <laughs> and I think it, it gives a whole new meaning to dick measuring contest. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, I think I think you know you see some of these clips coming out of the cellar too, and you hear like laughter, but you know like uh, having knowing the room so well, I know that he's crushing. I know he's killing in that room okay. because they don't mic the crowd. You can hear the audience laughing. And sometimes, as you know, you feel the euphoria of the yes. audience. They'll take you to places. And the audience can make you enjoy your show as much as anybody else. So how many, how many women in the crowd who are there with their spouse or boyfriend do you think nudged their partner for both sides of the spectrum on that one. Well, anybody dating a black guy for sure would, <laughs> gotcha. would be doing that for Steve's sure. Steve's last yeah. time on the show. Also. I'm Irish and Korean, so excuse me, guys. It's a travel size burn. Um, <laughs> so what do we give this uh, one to ten? Uh, he, he, uh, he came through at the end there. I thought he came through the whole time, but keep going. Um, I'm going to say I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him an 8.5. 8.5. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's high for you. Miss yeah. Blair. I'm going to say seven. Yeah. Not because I wasn't entertained, but I also think like dick jokes are kind of easy. <laughs> By so the way, did, did my came through joke just go right over Renee's head? I was, I was going to stop and say something, <laughs> but I was going to be like, I see what you did there. Um, so, yeah, I think in easy always people are always going to laugh at that. Mm hmm. Um, but it was great. So seven. Uh, yeah, maybe dick seven. Dick jokes 5. are easy, but I think a a big dick tax is something <laughs> I've not heard before. <laughs> and you know when he wrote the ha hot ta ta let's tax hot people, that was great. And then the mind goes to other places, and that was probably an easy place to go to. Okay. But it once he went to there before that, I would give it a seven. But when he did this, and he just went down again the rabbit hole of just like how far can you take this joke. That's how that's I, I would give it an eight point nine. I can't give it a nine Ooh. because it's a dick joke, like you said. Okay. So I'll stay within the framework of an eight, but on the higher end of eight. So I give so, it an eight point nine. So can I change to seven point five? 
Yes, you can. Okay. You can do whatever you want. Thank you. Seven point <laughs> five. I was gonna go with ten point five. Uh, just based 10. on ten point five. Oh, it's not inches. We're doing. we yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, not sorry. inches. Correct. Yeah, we're gonna gotcha. keep with. Okay. Yeah, We're here we go. Stick with eight and a half. <laughs> eight and a half. Eight point five. Perfect. Eight and a half. Clip number four. Now this is. Uh, our last clip before we do our, our, our last actual clip, and I'll tell you what that is. It's a surprise. So here we go. Clip number four. Let's see. Oh, okay. Here we go. A name everybody yes. here should be familiar with, Mr. Ron White. Let's go. Any initial thoughts on Mr. Ron White? Ron, Ron White. I think that uh, at one point in my career, we represented uh, Blue Collar mm -hmm. Comedy Tour. Uh, so I'm very familiar with, with Ron. Uh, I would venture to guess that Ron is uh, very popular in our neck of the woods sure the um, red neck of the woods <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly um i like ron i'm curious yeah. to see what clip david picked is that a song i need to write that our down red neck of the woods the red neck of the woods red neck of the woods yeah. titles guys she's already got a title titles we're, is we're that how you write that do you think of the title first or do you every day is different i just i hear things in real life and i'm There's like Ooh. every day is different yeah I'll write that one. Okay. Fuck cool. you. I'm taking it. <laughs> um, Ron White. I'll say, uh, uh, always a fan from afar. Never met him. And then, uh, just before pandemic hit, he started coming to the comedy store a lot. And I was excited. I was like, oh, I hope to run into him at some point because he's somebody I'd love to see. I've heard crazy stories about him and you know drinking and stuff. And I was like, he, he seems like a an outlaw. And I met him one night, and we went back to the to the. Um, there's like a comic bar in the back of the comedy store, me and Sebastian Maniscalco, and we were just catching up, and then Ron White said, join me for a drink. We said, fuck yeah, of course. Who's not gonna join with Ron White? Sure. Uh, flash forward, like two hours later, we're drinking his Don, Don Juan, or number one, number one uh, uh, tequila, that it's his own company. Sure. I'm not a tequila drinker, and this stuff was like water. It was potent, it was delicious. And then he's like, I think it was like, we should go back to my place and <laughs> keep drinking. I'm like, I gotta get the fuck home. It's like three in the morning. So cut to you guys measuring your dicks <laughs> with Tom Picard in the like, garage. Like, was this a hookup invite or what? <laughs> well, Ron White and Sebastian Maniscalco are in two very different tax brackets. I'll just, I'll just say that. So I had to get home. But uh, let's like watch this a little tax bracket we just saw, or like actual. <laughs> no, okay, no, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Big dick tax bracket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's go to good callback. You're welcome. Get her on stage. Get her a mic. Get her. Get her on, <laughs> on a Zanies with the open mic. She's gonna crush Honestly, it. Thank you. Crushing it. I think it. that's my true talent, but I'm just afraid of it. Fuck yeah. <laughs> you can do this. If Jelly Roll can do it, you can do it. Huh. All right. Here we go. Let's see Ron White. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start off this evening by asking you a question because I don't know the answer. Uh, I lost my sunglasses, so and uh, yesterday I went to the sunglass hut. Here's the question: Why does a pair of sunglasses? Costs more than a 25-inch color television set. <laughs> <laughs> I go to the sunglass hut. I see a pair of glasses I like. I don't love them. I don't. I like them. <laughs> 309 bucks. And I ask the guy very politely, how do you sleep at night, you little prick? <laughs> and I told him, and this is true, that two weeks ago I bought a 25-inch color television set from Walmart for 218 bucks. And he goes, well, apparently, sir, you don't get it. I'm listening. <laughs> he goes, these glasses eliminate 100% of all UV rays. I'm like, no, apparently you don't get it. This thing decodes a digital satellite signal that picks up from outer fucking space. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ron White. Oh. What are your thoughts? That was funny. I love, um, huge fan of comics who are able to, that was one thing on Late Late Show that I always encouraged comedians to do was to take a look at their, at their bits, at their jokes. Um, adding detail mm -hmm. really, I think, brings the crowd into it. And it shows that he did some research. Um, it, it makes them look smart. 
Yeah. Um, that clip, uh, maybe not the poster child for, you know, being healthy. Um, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, uh, that was funny. You know, we put some thought into it, and uh, yeah, it was, it was a good payoff. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. How about you, hon? I was beyond obsessed. I think yeah. that might have been my favorite clip I of all of them. I heard you the whole time, so yeah. I, I don't know if it's that he reminds me of my father, who is a horrible human being. Like, they could be twins in a lot of ways. Um, a fun, horrible human being? or The greatest. Okay. But, like, wildly offensive. Always the life of the party. My dad is truly a comedian that just, like, never, like, everywhere he goes, but never had an as, uh, aspiration to pursue it for a Sure. Um, I'll tell you some jokes later and you'll be like, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, but the fact that he's like just chain smoking a oh, cig, yeah. holding his alcohol. And, you know, again, back to what I said from the first clip of like, we've all gone in sunglass hut and been like, what the fuck? Sure. And I just, I think that's something that every person in the crowd can relate to, which mm-hmm. I love, but how comfortable he looked just like being himself. I could, I would imagine him standing in his own kitchen, having the exact same type of dialogue that makes you feel like you're just sitting there watching this person be a person and not necessarily being a audience member at a show. Exactly. I, I think that's what makes Ron great is that what you're seeing, you're seeing Ron White. You're not seeing like an act. You're not seeing somebody who... Uh, is is like like Joan Rivers is acting it out right right and more theatrical whereas Ron White is like no this is me and this is this is stuff I, I generally think about yeah. and I think he would if, if you left the mall from Sunglass Hut and got in the car with him he would be you would hear fractured pieces of that yeah. bit over the course of 10 minutes mm-hmm. and what you saw on stage was him compacting it and flushing it all out and now it's a genuine bit that's so airtight and the payoff is great it's yeah. really, really great. Yeah, it but is. But I, I think taking something relatable, like you said, in the conduit of someone who's genuinely <laughs> furious about it, like, like I asked him politely, "How the fuck do you sleep with yourself?" Prick. You know, it's so yeah, great. It's, it's so, so good. great. Yeah. By the way, he's so seasoned, and I don't know when that clip was from, but clearly, I mean, I don't think people are smoking on stage. But it was interesting that he yeah. used he used the the drink, whatever that was, whiskey, sure. and the cigarette uh, to his advantage. It felt, you're right, it, did, the it felt like he was standing up in the living room at yeah. the family re- reunion and he was about to make some sort of big announcement, but you, you sort of, he pulled you in with that. But also he used the cigarette taking drags to get that pregnant pause. Yep. Um, I need but to yeah, talk about yeah, I this mean, later with you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know he's got, you know he's not going to stifle momentum. Yeah. So again, he's accentuating the joke and knowing the audience is going to laugh here, I take a drag. The audience is really going to laugh here, let me take a sip. So I think when you're performing, and, and as I'm sure you know, you know when a beat hits, when you can, right. as Michael Jackson says, let it sizzle. Yeah. Right? Can, can I ask, have you ever purchased anything from a mall kiosk? Uh, probably the octopus head scratcher. I got suckered in by you those. Got back oh, the in the day. They're so, they're the nice. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean. How long until it was destroyed or lost, or you just gave up on it? I can't answer that question, but I know I loved it so much that I bought one last Christmas off Amazon. Did you really? Okay. They feel Went really nice. Wow. Have you guys just got you know it's, they're nice. Yeah. I thought they were called Tingler. No. I call them octopus. I've never. I, I don't even know what they're called. They're like it's like a. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah it's like it's a little, little stem. And then you, oh, yeah, yeah. my my fiance. It's like his favorite thing in the world. If I break that yeah. out, he's like so happy. Yeah. See, my our rule if we ever went to the mall was to stay away from the kiosk. Yeah, at all costs. Hey, yeah. can I have your attention? No, thank you. Yeah. I didn't look at you. I didn't breathe in your direction. <laughs> what makes you think you could talk to me? Go back to your phone, Casey. Yeah. So I'm not talking to you. <laughs> no. Well, what do we give a score, Ron White here? Again, tough one because he's. Uh, Clearly, uh, top of the crowd. Um, he's been doing it for so long. Um, let's try and break it down. Let's see. Content, appearance. We're not grading on appearance. Um, he's sexy. I could have suggested better hair product. Um, Daddy issues. I'm going to say. He reminds me of my dad. I'm gonna he's <laughs> hot. Uh, is everything okay at home? <laughs> that son of a bitch. He's <laughs> awesome. I love him. Uh, let's see. I'm going to give Ron. I'm going to give him an eight on that one. An eight. Okay. Yeah. Uh Hot for Daddy? I feel like I'm dishing out points like Halloween candy, although, you know, we just had Halloween right around the corner. Um, but I, I would say 10. I mean, I ten? don't know how comedy gets much more better than that. Yeah. I, I would say 10. Take that. What did col- he do wrong? Nothing. Folks. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do anything He's wrong. He's doing a lot right, apparently. Yeah. A lot. Ron go home White, more like Ron Wright. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get her on stage, I'm telling you. Um, I'm going to go... I'm gonna go uh, 
Eight point nine. Because right. the tracker, uh, Thacker, Thacker, yeah. The car, the car, <laughs> the car, the like car Tron. <laughs> um, the car made me cry, and this one was just a bit where I, as a comic, was like, "Oh, it's fucking great. It's a really great bit." Yeah. Uh, I, I'll give that an eight point nine as well. So. Uh, to round out our show, All right. we always have, we usually have two comics at the least, okay? But we qualify. show a clip of one of the performers on here. Now, Adrian's obviously not a performer. David picks the clip, so it could be either you or me. We shall see who the clip is today. I pray to God it's not me because I, I cringe anytime I see my... Thank fucking God. Okay. So it's it's a clip of you. Oh, God. So we're going to watch what? a clip of Renee Blair. So Jordan sent we're me this video. This. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's see what uh, the this clip is. is. Real? Yep. I'm terrified. Here we go. I'm very excited about this. Oh, it's your new video. It's my new right? video. Fuck yeah. Is that a fiddle leaf uh, in the background there? Well, it was a hotel room, That's a so I think it was fake as fuck. Love it. Look at her. I like it. So when did you shoot that? That was about a month and a half ago um, really? at a hotel a quick turnaround. called the Van Dyke in East Nashville, a little boutique hotel. Oh, they, they rent by the hour, right? Van if, Dyke. Is that correct? If you know no, somebody. it's the Van Dyke. Oh, fuck. I'm if sorry, you know guys. Somebody. Sorry about that. Wrong yeah. hotel. Um, congratulations. It looked awesome. Thank you. It sounds great. I don't know that I'm going to be bench pressing to that That's okay. at some point, but it's definitely a girly song. But even as a guy, I would say it's pretty catchy. I, I would, if I heard my wife listening to that as she's getting ready, I wouldn't be surprised because she loves getting ready. She likes to listen to music when she gets ready. So, so you don't Just invite like there you go. You don't invite friends over to get downtown up? Uh when I get downtown up <laughs> Um, See, look, it's a term, though. You guys, I like downtown up. Yeah, yeah, we coined that at uh, Radnor down the street here in Nashville. My fiance and I were on a walk, and I was like, "We have so many songs about me being drunk at the bar, coming home a hot mess. We need like me going out. Uh, Something this a is little the prequel. more. This is the uh, yeah, the tailgate. very nice downtown up. So, <laughs> do you come up with that term as you're uh, as you're writing this, or? We, I mean, we came up with it on a walk. Mm -hmm. I actually have to give my fiance credit for that one. Um, I was like, you know, just getting ready to go out downtown. And he was like, yeah, getting downtowned up. And I was like, that is magical. That is genius. Wow. Stop. We're not going yeah, out. Like, we're going to, we're having a right <laughs> right now. Um, is that kind of what happens though? Do you get yeah. struck with, uh, you know, a message and then do you start like, do you get so enthusiastic cause you're getting ready to go out or you're like, you know, can we not go to Chili's tonight? Can I just stay home? <laughs> or, what Chili's is a trigger word in our house. Ch oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, blah, that's, a, that's a side note. Um, okay. She literally just cleared out the afternoon <laughs> but schedule. But is it something where, where like you hear a great term like that and instantly the thoughts start yeah. generating or can you keep it on ice? Can you compartmentalize or uh, what is your process? Um, it's, it's a little different. Like that one, for example, I was like, I know that this is a magical title and we can't fuck it up as writers by yeah. not giving the rest of the song, you know, all the lyrics in front and after the title, like the credit that this great title deserves. But sometimes you go into a write and I'm like, this is an amazing title. And then the people you bring it into, it's just not the right combination. And it sure. ca and the, that's a really disheartening feeling. Mm -hmm. So um, you kind of have to wait until the song is completely done to really know what you have. Got and it. some rights take an hour, some take five or six different sessions or different days. Mm -hmm. So I'm very curious, just coming from years in, in TV and film and stuff like that, ideas are a hot commodity. Yeah. And, you know, the same goes with TV, with songwriting, with joke writing. You know, I'm kind of curious uh, across the panel here, how protective are you of a seed of an idea like in your case a title in steve's case maybe it's a, a premise yeah or a yeah. payoff or something like that um 
you know, that's that's an interesting question, too. Back to dick jokes. <laughs> um, we can always <laughs> go back there if you would like. But, you know, there's been, a pr- I think, in country music history, probably four or five number ones of the same title, Without You. Keith Urban had a song, Without You. Luke Combs had a song, Without You. And in that particular case, it's not necessarily the title. It's the other lyrics, the melodies that makes it a hit or not a hit. But then when you have such a special idea, like A God's Country or something like that, that really is the idea that's the focus of it and not necessarily the rest of the song so I think there's there's content on like a blueprint scale Mm -hmm. and then also you know to dive in or zoom in a little bit deeper on like if it's something so specific that you know if you know that Ron White story everybody is buying the sunglass hut but if that was a specific experience that he had sure then if another comic told that exact same joke the same way you'd be like no that was his story with sunglasses that was a little more versatile but like you know you've seen comics tell a very specific story mm-hmm. that only they could have experienced sure. i feel like you're safe with downtown up if so like as right. opposed to without you if somebody comes out, oh it's my new song right. downtown up uh, so yeah you, ever said it you have to be somewhat protective of your ideas but also understand that there are thousands of songs written a week in nashville yeah and everyone's going to kind of say the same things at some point and just trying to fight for you know creativity and sure. being unique is a battle all on its own but it was a great it, it's like you heard again like to your point you've heard a thousand different songs about the same thing but he isn't uh, even like when adrian sent me the link and everything and and checked everything i was like oh that's i i I'd watched this video uh, amongst a few others and um and i was like wow that's that's a pretty cool term i've never heard that before in yeah. a song that's that's a that's like a a creative way of saying see i would, going s- tonight, you know? I would yeah. say gussied up Gussied up, yeah. Gussied up. Yeah. That's why you're there, up. and that's yeah. why she's she's on stage. <laughs> right, right, right. I'm getting gussied <laughs> up. <laughs> but I think you could even franchise this song because there's many man. things you could get Kinsey up. You could get Ford Fiesta <laughs> upped, uh, like when Ford Fiesta's rolling out the new 2020 to uh, Ford Fiestas. Uh, car dealerships could yeah. take take credence of the song and do a knockoff version. It, there's many avenues that Downtown Up could go, but I'm most excited about this one thank you and you know what you have nothing to do with it because your fiance came up with it so he much did. much applause to him he's the best you did the easy shit he did the hard <laughs> thing he did the legwork he came up with it so i uh, this is the first one i would go 10 out of 10 oh, today because i love the song i think it's again it's a creative term i've never heard before in a song of all the songs i've ever heard i was like that's fucking smart thank Pretty you cool. yeah. thank you so much i love it I think this is the easiest one to grade. I'm going to give it a 10 as well. Oh, and that closet is very guys. similar to mine. It's like, is yeah. she in my closet? By the like, way, I'm glad, that. I'm glad she pointed out that you were in a hotel because sometimes I forget about this stuff, being on the other side, and then I watch it, and I'm like, God, I'm like, dang, everybody's got great-looking bedrooms, and everything's clean. Yeah. And then I go home to my house with four kids, <laughs> and there's just shit everywhere. <laughs> And I'm like, I can never shoot a music video at my house. It's like a crossbow fitness thing with uh, jackets and hats <laughs> on it. It hasn't been used in four years. Our elliptical Legos? with 35 what sweaters. Are Legos, just Legos. kid toys. Garage filled with Legos, yeah. The, the, the worst. The Legos yeah. are great. Uh, anyways, I, I, we can go down a dad tangent. <laughs> uh, I don't want to do that to you. I don't want to bore you. But congratulations you on so your much. newest album, 17. Super pumped about that. I assume you're going to be touring. Yeah, we're going to kind of... Take it easy the rest of the year and really kick off 2022, which, how are we here? Hell yeah. Um, yeah, hit the ground running. Very nice. Congratulations. Thank I can't you. wait. And, and when you're performing here in Nashville, I'd love to come out and support. I'm going to get downtown up. You and better. then I'm going to get uh, Uptown Hangover uh, after the show. Uh, Adrian? Look, I've got a, a big day of work coming up tomorrow. <laughs> and then the day <laughs> after. And the day after. Uh, no. Um, working on a seventh book. Uh, but that probably nice. will not be out until 2021. In the meantime, I would love it if everyone were going on Amazon. Search for Adrian Culp, especially if you're new parents. Yep. We're pregnant. Yes. First time pregnancy handbook is coming up on a quarter of a million copies sold. Ooh. Yeah, so should hit hit that this weekend. And uh, yeah. That's amazing. That's and, Congrats and to you where as well. Can they, where can they find you, though? Where can everybody find you? Apple, Blair? Spotify, Pandora, Amazon, anywhere you listen to your country music. And what we <laughs> learned from our good friend Jelly Roll is if you uh, are going to bed and you got a computer downstairs, put you on Spotify, Yep. and you get paid. You just churn out the bucks, well, right? It, it takes a while, but... It takes... Some, yeah, you know... In there, theory. Yeah. yeah it, the streaming platforms um, are very, very good to me, but... God, if I if this was the '90s and I was on country radio, I would be multi-millionaire. But uh, I I love what I do, so 
Very uh, nice. It's very nice. And when can uh, now this one just came out? What is the process to get to the next one? Just curious. I know this one just came out. You want to enjoy it? Let's take a victory lap. Yeah. But that's usually the next question, right? When I'm can we always expect? writing. I write several songs a week, and um, you know, I'm always kind of thinking, what's next? I'm a three on the Enneagram scale, an achiever, very much like what's next. Let's keep going. Um, so excited for new music next year. Already in the process of getting. And you'll some be doing out. the open mic here soon at some point, right? I would honestly love oh, to. Yeah. Uh, you could crush it. All right, guys, thank you so much. Comedy Pinata, I want to thank Renee and Adrian for Woo! joining. Thank and you. Go get 17. Get it now. All right. Thank you so Lots much. Lots of love, guys.